for the second part of, of our panel, I want to move to Oliver um, because um, because one thing I have to move to you, <laughs> and the other thing is I really liked your product uh, when I was because it, it was new. It was a new product for me. But I didn't know about it. So please, you know, uh, introduce what what do you do and and how can you you know how do you see your product um you know uh, adding to the i gaming industry in the regulated market um and and the advantages that you can bring okay thanks um i'm oliver lead ceo and founder of nanocosmos from berlin i bring maybe a bit different viewpoint here to the table because we are a technology company in the live streaming industry we are working with Leo since 1998 well known as a reliable partner and received some awards already in the video and broadcast industry and now for several years we provide a complete live streaming platform uh, for interactive use cases called nanostream cloud a completely white label and our customers run our software under their brands so these are usually uh, platform operators um, which embed interactive live streaming into their system like uh, iGaming, of course, and uh, live casino games, but also live betting, um, other use cases which, which create uh, monetized business content like live auctions and webcasts for business and entertainment. So having said that, we see a lot of opportunities for live streaming in the gaming industry. Um, and when it comes to regulated markets, live video somehow creates some, some more credibility in my, in my opinion. You see real people sitting on a table and a live game running, you see a real life situation. Also having metrics available um, and the right uh, business insights into the, into the content and your outreach increases the credibility somehow if you're on the transparency of your application. So our company not really provides a gaming solution. So we are not um, directly handling these uh, gaming regulation things. It's more a generic live stream platform, but we still have to care about certain legal issues like uh, content ownership and legal rights of the, of the content, of course, yeah. which we handle with protection and security technology around the live stream, but also metrics to, to have the right insight and in where you are more active, where you have more business value and, and certain areas of the world and where it's important to maybe invest more into regulation. So what I found uh, interesting was the comments in, in the former panel, which is uh, somehow um, pointing to an important fact in my opinion that uh, regulation is not only a legal issue, but also some kind of uh, reputation based and of course a political um, influence and also cultural background, which is um, impacting the whole regulation things. So um, the the whole whole reputation of the industry is, as we know, not so high compared to other gaming areas like video gaming, uh, which um, of course also has monetized content like the free to play approaches, etc. So it's not too far away in the use case, but uh, the reputation is much lower. So handling that and creating uh, more investment and activities and public affairs and having a reliable platform running, a transparent platform, uh, things like responsible gaming, um, increasing um, like kind of the approach of serious games, which uh, which uh, get rid of the reputation issues. issues uh, I think that would be valuable activities which increase the uh, possibility to also cope in uh, regulated markets better. Okay, uh, understood. So, um... Yeah. Can you please provide some, some let's say, uh, some examples of, of, of what you do? Like, you know, um, just let's say, let's, let's, let's um, divide into some sort of a, a, um, products that, that you, you can provide. So basically one is the streaming thing, streaming, let's say, um, service to the, to the, so what you know, whoever uh, comes to you, or you know, how how does it how does it look like? You know, we already spoke about that, but you know, I want to I want to, the audience to, to to really understand where I come from. You know, how mm -hmm. does it look like? Because we don't have the, the the presentation here, so yeah, yeah. So we we can pick a video feed from a from an operator or for, from a gaming provider. So we would pick up a camera feed from anyone who's sending us a live stream. 
we the uh, platform providers would send this uh, live stream from a table, for example, to us. Um, we do, do the delivery around the world, and we also have a player software which is running on all browsers. So the, you can embed this live stream then on any web page, on a gaming web page where you have a live video running. Uh, the gaming elements are coming from your uh, specific application uh, in your gaming um, backend, but the video feed is coming from our platform, and we are somehow hidden as a white label provider on this web page. So um, the uh, viewers will see the branded game running and the live stream running on that web page. And uh, it's picked up then by our network, which we take care of handling going around the world. So it runs on any device. We operate also in very hostile environments, anywhere in bad network situations. Uh, of course, a game should run anywhere, even in a bus or uh, when you commute, um, that the, the uh, quality stays as high as, qual as possible. You see the, the game running and you can place your bets. So the interactive component is very important. Um, needs to be um, in a low delay situation, low latency is, and it's a, is a very important technical word for this, where you have a low uh, time offset between the camera and the viewer, which needs to be around one second end to end. So you can keep in near real time and keep your game running or your bets running uh, near the real time uh, game is running. So that's okay, but so for, for, so for instance, like, you know, what, what I hear from you uh, uh, now, you know, like, you know, you already pointed out some, uh, like, you know, uh, requirements, but these are, you know, um, um, let's say self-raised requirements, let's say one second, it, what, you know, what's that? Or, or you already uh, became, um, let's say, under the the radar of the regulators of the gambling regulators have, have they you know already included you into the scope of um you know um let's say testing or or, or 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 certifying with the labs or something like that you know providing the certificates and stuff like that is it you no know, or uh, because we are still you know speaking about the uh, the increase of the regulations everywhere so um you know, so basically my my question is uh, are you already under some sort of specific um, regulatory requirements, uh, specific gam gambling specific regulatory requirements, requirements in any kind of jurisdiction, or is it you know foreseen to the future? You know, for the future, as we are, we don't provide any games. We are not um, related to the gaming regulation, but of course we need to be as a European company to comply to all legal rules which are around uh, providing content and live content but uh, not specifically to the uh, gaming industry okay great um let's um, move to alex if he's here yes he is here hi hi um how was your last half an hour listening to us amazing I, you know for for, for me like I'll do a bold statement. I love regulations, you know. I'll uh, elaborate on this more, but in my particular situation and in general for industry, I think this is a great thing. And, uh, it, you know, I had, the, like, since we are working um, in um, gaming and media business, you know, I'll just explain that Betagy is the largest uh, content marketing dynamic provider of, uh, of our industry. And, uh, Basically, we work with digital, we work with retail, we work with uh, performance marketing, we work with uh, on-air graphics, and we have experience in Europe and US. We have experience in gaming top companies and media top companies like ESPN, Yahoo Sports, and so on. So, uh, and both regulated and unregulated markets. So, I have, uh, you know, I have a knowledge of all those parts of the business, and I can uh, say that. Uh, following the Magnus thought that actually, you know, this is where the industry is going to regulation because it makes better the whole ecosystem. And uh, looking on a macro level, uh, if you look in the market unregulated and non-regulated, uh, the amount of professionalism you see in, in marketing campaigns in the companies, in a talent which they can acquire in their companies, in a uh, investment which they can bring, in a stability which regulation can bring into the uh, in, in the industry itself, in the regulated markets, uh, makes it night and day in terms of the uh, long-term investment of resources. And if we talk about opportunities, and especially, let's say, if you work in innovation, 
um, industry as a part of our industry or anything which gives you opportunity to develop, regulation is a way to go and we need to embrace it with anything, uh, with everything possible. And uh, uh, from my perspective, you know, for example, we have last two years, we worked extensively with US companies and they are crazy about regulations. If Europe is crazy about regulations, yeah. US <laughs> is like, you know, next level. And especially when we talk about merge of uh, two industries here, which is sports media and sports betting, for example, where in US it's a normal thing to every betting company becomes a media company and media company becomes betting company. They create lots of content, all this dynamic live. So when you have live content in a regulated industry, as they are very cautious about not actually what the content will be, they're cautious whether they can comply with the each state regulations. And uh, when we talk to big uh, guys like ESPN, Sinclair, Univision, they don't have like product is a level zero to talk to them. So if you have a product which fits their needs or they even don't know they need it, but they see it and they like it, this gives you a level zero. And then afterwards, the biggest discussion goes around integration and 70% of integration goes about regulation and then how technology can help them to comply. So one of the requests which I constantly get is, okay, Alex, how your software can enable us to see how much exposure every betting con piece of content uh, uh, can be, like how we can measure the exposure on all 150 regional TV stations, uh, you know, of the odds which we show in certain states. So it's, it's so different. And this gives you an additional value on top of your product so basically if you work with unregulated markets you can sell your product for x amount of money and this is the base value which you have when you go to uh, regulated markets as uh, because of the ecosystem is more developed you have more money more professionalism more investment in it everyone is cautious about regulations therefore the uh, price of uh, mistake is higher therefore you can add extra margin on top of your content by providing technological tools to comply with regulations and that's how you know basically the growth happening in my company as soon as we moved from a mid-tier clients to top tier clients we didn't change the product much of course we do the improvements but what we upscaled is actually our legal, legal department and how we deal with regulations and what tools we provide our customers with in order to comply with local regulations and it gives stability to the whole ecosystem here. And if I can compare both clients from unregulated and regulated markets and on the quality of like, you know, it all goes down to the whole industry organization. So it's not about legal part. So if you see the level of marketing campaigns, which they execute in one industry and in one market and another one, it's completely different and it's more like bar barbarian style of doing business, yeah, yeah. proper style of doing business. And then when market suddenly becomes regulated, but it was unregulated, then we have a headache and all the companies which were not compliant with this, they have a problem how to fight army of great companies which are, flood, which are flooding the market with expertise, capital, stability, and so on, and knowing how to do business and regulate markets versus barbarian techniques of marketing and therefore regular, like legal setup and so on and so forth. So the faster we go into regulated markets, the better for everyone here. And uh, obviously, if someone is not transforming themselves now, already been in an unregulated market, uh, they would have to do it sooner or later or die in in my case and it, it, yeah uh, okay I, I i perfectly hear you now i, I want you know your your thoughts of, um, on the other aspect of the same puzzle let's say because you're you're, you're right now you're you were speaking about the uh, unregulated and unregulated market but you know um it's not always uh you know the the highly regulated market it's not always a well-regulated market so, um, yeah, so, 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 you know, how do you see these, you know, two, for, you know, from my, you know, experience, the, 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 the two worst, uh, you know, regulation errors are, you know, bureaucracy, one thing, and the other thing is the unreasonable regulation, like, you know, yeah. um, you can, you can have, you know, it's, the, it's, it's, it's as high as, um, unreasonably you know they, they, you know the, the, you you always have these kind of uh, you know funny stuff which is um which you know the the it it, it really acts in a opposition to any logic there sure. is let's say sure. like you know ever ever spinning rng let's see one one of the one of the um requirements that i see some sometimes in at least two jurisdictions is in um 
ever spinning RNG for the slots, which is mm. completely insane, which is a very, very high regulation. The, 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 the example of a, of a very, really high regulation, but it's not worth it at all because it's, it's it's worthless so how do you you know how do you see these yeah. kind of you know obstacles like 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 you know bureaucracy bureaucracy is a, is a problem not only for the for the little ones the, for the for, for the little b2b's or b2c's but for, for the for the you know big corporations as as, as well so you know how do you sure. what, what's, your, uh, what's your take on that uh, we have clients you know in highly highly regulated and i would say to my to my uh, like in two regulated environments where we cannot, for example, introduce any product to the market for next years, not because it's not valuable for them. We know it increases conversion. We know it, it's good. Everything is good. A part that they cannot, you know, and they say, Alex, you know, uh, the problem we have is that we need to wait for, for skies to, <laughs> for, for, yeah. until the regulation has changed. And those are the top players in this market. Therefore, they are watched very carefully and they say we cannot do left or right even you know with, without being noticed therefore they're scared and this stops the innovation you know and, and everyone wants to implement it the whole team is excited uh, you know to, to proof of concept done everything is done there's a business data it makes perfect business sense without actually you know uh, possibility to inter- implement it and this kind of i don't like stuff and obviously there is always a balance it's supposed to be balanced somewhere because bureaucracy kills innovation kills the speed uh, it uh, favors yeah, right. their uh, uh, competition, which is unfair. You know, someone who doesn't follow regulation will win in certain perspectives, you know, and the regulator doesn't do a good job into, let's say, canceling out those who are, have a uh, unfair, comp- who provides unfair competition. So I'm um, for balance and definitely over-regulation is, you know, is same, yeah, same, oh, same. Okay, I, re- I, re- I really agree with you, with your point that, you know, the, it's the, the, the quality of our industry um really you know uh, benefits from from regulation that's that's for sure and the, the, you know with the quality of the industry comes the reputation as well as automatic you know circumstance so um yeah so i i want to yeah get back to my to my previous question about you know how this you know uh, the, the, the 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 regulation how does you know how does that shape the products, the, the 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 products, the industry, the the, the approach that we have as as, as the industry, uh, you know, it, it, does it you know does it really you know influence of what we create, what we want to provide, you know, in terms of 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 you know what we are allowed to provide, or is it or or, or, or do you still think it's you know the other way around, you know, it, that the, the the regulations really adapt to what is there in the market? And somehow follows the industry, or now we, you know, already got into to the point that we have to, you know, follow the the the, the regulations. So let's start from 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 the start, Evelina, because we still have 15 minutes. So I think we will run one run one round and and see if there's you know some sort of question from the from the audience. Uh, definitely interesting question, but I think that. All depends, like Jan said before, that uh, it is all about the company's target and goal because they cannot change completely the product that they created just because the regu- regulator of one jurisdiction says so, because it's simply not wise. Um, so I would say that you can change some ab- aspects. Uh, in your product, adjust it according to the regulation, but not change it entirely so that the, the, the main basically uh, goal uh, is lost. So um, to some aspects, it might create uh, some changes, adjustment, but not entirely. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. So, uh, Magnus, let's let's move to you. What's what's your take? You know, who's 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 really now following whom? You know, the regulations are following industry, on, or, or, or industry is, is forced to follow the, the regulations. What's what do, what do you think? And what what do you think? It's you know, what, what will we see in the, in, in 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 the future? Yeah. So, um, can only speak for ourselves, of course. But uh, what um, you know, we do want to. We don't. Want, we want to provide 
gambling in a safe and secure and, and uh, uh, honest environment. And, and, you know, and, and the regulators want the same thing. So in that, in that sense, we are working towards the same goal. And uh, most often it overlaps. Sometimes some re- uh, jurisdictions or regulators go, you know, go some further than others. And of course, we have to adapt our products somewhat. But since we have the same fundamental ambition to provide that safe, secure environment to, to enjoy good entertainment with a, a gambling um, part in it, uh, then I think it's it's uh, for us it's uh, it's not a big deal uh, to adjust, adapt the, the the product. It's it's, um, it's 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 not a big issue for us. Uh, I I believe that we we are clearly driving towards high quality entertainment. That's the space we want to be in. The regulators, I feel, want that as well. So again, yeah. we have some we have alignment. There are elements of, um, you know, big jackpots, network jackpots, or other functions in the games that maybe other suppliers are using more frequently than we are doing, and um, and we see regulators aiming towards those. And honestly, it, it's not a big concern for us, but it could be for the industry. So in that sense, I believe that we are, if not driving, at least leading or being part of the same movement, uh, depending on how aggressive I should pitch playing go. Um, but that's where we want to be. And I think that in many cases we are, and that's a good spot for us. You know, we, we want to be there. We want to provide a safe, secure gambling. We want to provide high quality entertainment. And that is uh, for, for the most part, uh, part uh, rewarded by both operators, players, and regulators. Okay, thanks Thanks a lot. Uh, Jan, um, turning to you with the same thing. Well, uh, the question for us is usually uh, the following. If we have some, let's say, very restrictive regulations that would uh, damage the product in some way, or not damage, alter it in a way that... Uh, you know the players uh, may feel cheated then we can we can uh, use this uh, as an advantage because everybody is is now pushed into this uh, into this area so everybody has to alter the product in a way that uh, will be inferior than in some other jurisdiction and the, the mm-hmm. players uh, the players will tell you yes in this jurisdiction the games are inferior i can give you an example in the Czech market, you have a win cap. If your game delivers a win over 500,000 crowns, you all automatically are breaking the law. So uh, this is, uh, we're talking about wins that in like uh, general other jurisdictions are not a problem. And the Czech players- Can you, can you, can you, can you, please, uh, can you please tell me in, in euros, just, just for the- uh, we're talking about, uh, I would say, like 20,000 euros or so. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. So this this is nothing. If you, if you look at other jurisdictions where the players are really chasing the high wins. So right now, in this situation, you have two options as a, as a product person. Either you just cut the win at this moment and like I'm abiding by the regulation and that's it. Or you go around and you try to create a game or a mechanic that actually fits this requirement and makes it a strong point. Uh, for the win, it's very restrictive and usually like from what I've seen in the market, nobody has nothing, you know? But for example, in the German market where you have like more technical restrictions about spin time, yeah. about uh, like the, the stake limits, then you can go and you can look at this and, uh, and try to understand, okay, will I be compliant if I introduce these completely new solutions? And there are providers out there focusing on this, trying to uh, make innovation out of a bad situation. So I think this, this eventually will lead 
to the regulators shaping the product. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, if you look at the history of uh, slots, which this is what I can speak of, uh, you can see that uh, the basic stays, but some mechanics came up because the regulator says, oh, look, this is too much. We cannot allow the, the players to spend uh, the money this fast. You know, it looks very bad yeah. in creating yeah, numbers. Yeah. So, okay, so we'll abide by the regulation. We want to be compliant. We want to keep, you know, the relationship intact. So we're going to introduce a mechanic that doesn't make a fool out of the regulator, but at the same time, make it teasing for the player. So I think this is uh, where uh, some companies can really, really win at, uh, in the markets. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, the time to market is more important and you just have to make the cuts, change the product in a way that the regulator says, and uh, well, you are there in the same pool as all the other guys supplying the games. So at the end of the day, the, the players will choose. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I I see your point, and I I really agree I agree with that. And you don't you know um, you and 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 both both you both uh, and and Magnus you are speaking about um, more maybe more about the technical part, but it, there's the visual part as well. You know the um, and it really you know the the regulations really already it's 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 you know the the, the visual part has been shaped for a bit of time right now. Uh, because you know, starting from 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 the from the you know early days where you could uh, really market you know um, freely, basically like you can when you know that you this this or that will 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 get you rich or something like that, which is uh, totally unacceptable you know these days or or or. Or the nudity, or or you know other other kind of things. So the, these these regulations clearly, in my opinion, clearly shape the the, the industry. Um, so maybe no, to the better or worse, that's that's for people to decide. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. Let's move with the same question to to Oliver and Alex because we still have five minutes. So um, maybe Oliver, maybe you, you you know as far as you you are. As you, uh, you know, correctly pointed out, from a, a bit of a different side of the business. So maybe you know the the, the regulation is not shaping your side, of course. Um, however, maybe you, you you already see you know some signs or or or, or, or from the other industry of, of you know what's what's coming there. Uh, yeah, from the obviously the GDPR side of the things, and you know how yeah. do you see it? Of course, regulation uh, influences somehow as uh, uh, it depends on our customer success. And I think it's all about credibility and trust. So if you create a trustful platform, a trustful game, a safe game environment, I think that's uh, a win-win situation for everyone. And the uh, regulation directly is um, maybe not always a bad thing. So that might be an unpopular opinion here. But um, I see also there, of course, important to keep kids away from certain things, to keep uh, people away from getting addicted and things like that. So, and if um, providers adapt to that and create serious games, reliable games, a safe platform, trustful uh, business relations, and then it's a mutual benefit and uh, that creates also more openness by the regulators. So I think uh, everyone has a responsibility here somehow to to work on improve that to be able to enter these markets. And uh, we've seen by opening the regulation a bit uh, that was of course also um, created by kind of serious uh, reliable platforms which take care of uh, also these viewpoints somehow. Okay, thanks thanks a lot. And Alex, uh, your take on, 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 on the same thing. Um, who's who's following who and who's shaping? <laughs> there's no white or black stuff. Uh, I think from there's a economic theory which uh, uh, looks at the business as a um, unit on which forces are pushing, and you have supplier force pushing, so they somehow shape up your business. You have customers which shape up your product and business. You have your employees, you have your shareholders, and one of the important forces which pushes in business is government and governmental. Uh, affairs and of course the regulations and 
in every industry, it will be different force pushing from each side. And obviously in our industry, we have a higher force pushing there. Therefore, we cannot say that it's unshapeable. Like it definitely shapes it in the more so than any other business. So you have a strict limits, how your product can look like, how it will uh, you know, interact with uh, all kinds of ecosystems internally and externally in your business. And I think I would say if other businesses, and, and this is one of the most important ones, because if you assess the risks, say you, you try to invest in certain business or industry, you assess the risks, governmental risks and uh, you know regulation risks as one you cannot control, you have low control over. So you need to adapt. And this is the only way how you can do it. of course you can do association and you know and have a force and and so on and so forth but it's still low level of control over this risk factor or this push force however you know it's it's everywhere in every industry we just have a bit more of those and that's why we have all the conferences 70 percent of the conference we usually talk about regulations you know not about innovation and everything else or product or marketing or something we talk about regulations and this is the way it is and however, I have a very bright, uh, you know, end into this because in my many years of working with designers who need to design, if you don't give a clear bracket to designer time, what he needs to deliver and, and so on, he will usually will not deliver. If you give him a clear boundaries, the best designers will survive and deliver the best product they have. And it's not only design, I think, I think it's a whole uh, product, it's anything in business with a clear boundaries then you have a game of skill and the best will win you know so i would say yes it does shape more than everything but i think uh, we can all adapt to this you know and and move on okay so, so, so i just want to add something yeah, yeah so, sounds like all our products should be fully customizable and uh, adjustable that is the perfect solution for ever-changing markets i believe yeah especially in europe and everywhere you need to apply with everyone regulations if you sell across multiple uh, countries so it's not an easy game that's why we wouldn't have so many so such a tough competition, I guess. You know, I, we have less newcomers. We have less startups starting in this industry. We have less like it's hard to enter business in general. You know, to learn it and so on. So, we might enjoy this. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, 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 yeah, know. we might. And it's it's like you know we are used. You know, or, or the other regulated industries are, are really used. We we were used of of saying that you know the. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the legal acts are so, let's say, old and they don't you know, really talk about the actual situation because everything is really changing uh, a, a lot and the industry is really cha- you know, shaping what we see and, and the, you know, the regulation must somehow follow and, and, uh, and, and now we see that you know, we have these kind of strong brackets and, and, and have to adapt quite heavily. So yeah, but I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really thankful for you, everybody, for your thoughts. Uh, I hope, I hope you know, at least someone you know in in the audience enjoyed what we spoke about and we all will enjoy uh, the recording. I uh, I want to get the microphone back to Zoltan because it's equally time, so that's a good sign. And thanks a lot once again. Thank you, guys.